So I'm Detective Lego, this is Detective Warnicky. Basically, we, you know, we're investigating a, some, a citizen made a complaint about some things that, that potentially happened in during your employment in Kenosha. Have you been made familiar with this? I saw I had, <coughs> excuse me, um, I believe this started back in August, uh, or on August 26th of this year. Um, Kevin Matthewson, I believe, yeah, made a made a bunch of allegations to uh, uh, about myself to the director and assistant director and God knows who else it got sent out to. There was an email and internal investigation started at work at that point. And uh, matter of fact, yesterday I had a pre-disciplinary meeting with the director, assistant director, and our HR person. And the allegations, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry I was blindsided yesterday morning when you called. I'm like, you know, yeah, I, it was discussed that there were workplace violations and um, uh, things that could be misconstrued. Uh, there was a Menards rebate that was um, determined that I had actually utilized that right for personal, it appears for personal gains. Um, totally unaware of it. Uh, I, 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 I don't even recall it, but they were able to, um, through, they had gone, they, in their investigation, they had found and were able to produce, and I'm like, a, a receipt or receipts that I had utilized uh, this rebate. Um, it was in my name, delivered to joint services. I, I don't know how how I utilize, came to utilize it for myself. Um, typically, I don't even uh, send in receipts or, or rebates. Um, okay. And. Uh, it was, uh, I believe, they had requested. I, I think the Kenosha County Sheriff's Department had to request from Menards to go back further than the two years that were available to them, and that's where they. It was this that one time. Um, I can, <laughs> I can only guess as to why uh, or how it may have gotten. Um, overlooked or mixed up with my stuff because <coughs> we had moved into our new building about that time and from what I could tell the purchases that generated I guess the rebate were for a whole bunch of shop stuff that we needed um, you know, trash cans and dust pans and you know just general shop supplies or whatever that we needed and uh, that if I recall from the information they gave me was December of 2018 maybe and um, I think they said that Menards had reissued the rebate in January sometime and then the my use of it um, appears to have been I'm trying to recall. I should have brought stuff with me. <coughs> um, I, I think April, a portion was used, and then again, I think in May. The only thing I can surmise is, uh, like I said, I don't recall. Uh, it, it, it might, it had to have gotten mixed up in my my personal stuff, and <coughs> um, th that's what happened with that. And then um, after, and then also, um, they said in regards to to this was um, uh, sale of uh, scrap metal with a family member for a personal profit, and that <laughs> that um, 
that's just a whole long drawn out story. Uh, I mean, from my 30 years of employment there, um, any of our scrap, I mean, it was initially thrown in the trash as employees um, at some point. I couldn't even tell you when. You know, we did started separating that out and um, taking it in and using the proceeds, uh, taking it into the scrapyard and using the proceeds for our cookouts, our departmental cookouts. And um, I, I think over the years, uh, as money collected, we purchased a grill, um, a used refrigerator, um, it, it various, uh, I mean, we whatever, it was all departmental use. And the, um, a, at one point, I don't recall when this was, we had brought, um, we, we meaning our, our, the, the, our, our group, our employee group in the shop, we had brought um, a, a load to the scrapyard, um, a check was issued to the agency, and that was handed in to the director at the time, to the best of my knowledge. And the it was determined that uh, she didn't want us doing that on work hours. It was not. She was, I think, worried about injury and the time spent. Uh, you know, with multiple employees getting in, it, it just wasn't uh, a beneficial to the agency. So um, we we're told to stop doing that uh, on our work hours and. We continued to collect and then periodically would bring in and the money again went to um, our, our kitty, if you will, or our fund for our, our cookouts and whatnot. Okay. <coughs> so, oh, I'm sorry. No, go, go ahead. ahead. So, <coughs> I'm going to say this to get it out there. You're, you're not under arrest today or anything like that, okay? Um, you'll be able to walk away from here. Um, after we're done asking what we need, we're going to ask you some clarifying questions about some of the things that you just talked about, mm -hmm. okay? Because um, obviously we don't know how things work. So um, sure. you're certainly not under arrest or anything like that today. Um, we're going to ask you some clarifying questions. Um, if at any time you want to stop answering those questions, you can, and you'll be allowed to leave, and then you'll go about your day. So I just want to throw Sorry that out me. Yeah, I just want to throw that out there okay. so you understand. Mm -hmm. um, because um, those are what you've described are kind of some of the things that we want to talk to you about. Okay. Okay. Um, so I just want to put that out there that, you know, you're not going to be arrested today. You're going to be able to go home and go about your day after we're done talking to you about this. Um, okay. Any questions about that? Um, you know, I mean, what are, I, I, I guess, no, not at this point. I mean, you're talking okay. about arrest here, right? and, and obviously there's something legal that brings me here. <clears throat> well, and as you alluded to when you first came in, like some of these accusations could be criminal. Well, what, in your words. So That's what I was told. Right. So yeah. we're just, basically what we're looking to get into is the Menard's rebates and the scrap metal. So we're just going to ask you questions about that. Mm -hmm. And what Detective Warnicke brought up with you being free to leave, we just want you to know that at any point you're free to go. You don't have to answer our questions. Okay. So we just don't want you to think that you're stuck here. Okay. 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 So we're just explaining that to you. Sure. So the, let's start from the beginning. We'll go through the Menard rebates first. Okay. And we'll talk about that process. Um, was there ever any policy in place regarding the rebates? No, none. As a matter of fact, I I tried to review the policy. I requested our employee handbook and, and whatnot I had to, to review anything there. No. I saw nothing. To the best of my knowledge, there is nothing uh, dealing with Menards rebates. Okay. So let's. When you go to Menards to purchase items, how does that work? Um, Joint Services has a an account with uh, Menards, and there are approved um, purchasers um, on that account. So we uh, purchase whatever is needed. 
um, give them the account number up at the register, and then we have our identification to prove who we are. And um, the the process after that is, uh, you know, one, once we leave the store, we come back, we have to allocate, you know, where the funds are coming from to pay that one account, you know, whether it's for um, shop supplies or if it's for um, cleaning supplies for the car wash for the biohazard cleanups and whatever the case may be or if it's for tools uh, to be utilized at, at the shop or materials I guess you know for our upfitting process uh, whether it be you know whatever plywood or screws or whatever the case you know general purchase okay stuff. And, and it, would you be handed an admin as a physical receipt that you would that turn in? Normal printout, if you or I would go for that, yes. Okay. And how often, let's just say you go to Menards and you get a rebate, would you always turn those in, or did you, sometimes you would turn those in? How often would you? What do you mean, turn those in? So the rebates you have to send in, correct? <laughs> yes, you mean, do, how often would I mail them into? Right. Or, or mail that rebate off. So if you, yeah, if you went to Menards and you ordered something for the joint services and there was a rebate. Typically, never. I, I, I mean, I can't, I, that's why I, um, my wife even says, you, I, I don't even take care of the rebates at home. You know, it, uh, the only thing I could guess that this happened to be a rather large purchase, us moving in there, I thought it was a rather large pur purchase when I saw the receipt that they presented to me. Um, because of our, our, our new move into there, I probably saw the rebate on there that it was um, something significant. You know, it wasn't two dollars or something, and um, it got filled out um, it, it apparently in my name and joint services because I believe they told me it said in care of, or I don't know how it said, but it, it was. My name and joint services. It was mailed to work. Um, like I say, in, through the chaos of everything, I, I probably I totally even forgot about it. I, I mean, I, I otherwise, and, and I did ask them yesterday. I said, "You were able to obtain however many years back. How many times did I, you know, do this?" And they said, "This one time. They had not." presented any or, or sent in any other rebates. Did you do your own personal rebates through Menards as well? I, like I said, I, I, I throw them on the counter or the desk at home and my wife, if she takes care of them, they get sent in. If they, if they get forgotten, obviously they get, get thrown away if it's beyond the time frame. Okay. So there, there's just two, two purchases that are in question here. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, these are the list of items, mm -hmm. and this was the um, amount of the rebate that was used. Okay. So it uh, looks like on April 27, 2018, I'm, I get that that was a while back. Do any of these items look like they would have been for shop use or personal use? No, I, I, I would not assume that those would be for shop use at all. I, I can only assume that they're for personal use. Okay. And then there was a, a second transaction, which would have been on May 25th. Mm -hmm. Would have been uh, some sealer, potting soil, and some miracle grow. It certainly, it certainly wouldn't be for shop use. Okay, so those those uh, those purchases would, would have been for personal use. Um, and this second order, uh, there was uh, $41 with paid with a rebate, and then the rest was put on a credit card. Would okay. that would that have been your credit card? I, I'm uh, from what they showed me yesterday. I don't have my uh, Menards card. Uh, I don't think. But I, I saw a signature line, or my signature was on the line. Yeah. So and, I, and it's just a master. Of, yeah, Menards card. Five one four. 
Okay, so that would have been paid yeah, on your on my card. Yeah. Okay, so from the best of your recollection, those would have been personal items that you purchased. <coughs> they would have to be. Okay, I, I, I would have to. Okay, I can only uh, yeah, I can only guess that they they were my personal purchases. Yes. Okay. I, I don't know why else my card would be used to for the remaining balance. Okay. Do you have any other questions about the Menards rebates? Were there any were there any other purchases that you made throughout your tenure as a supervisor where you you had the rebate or you got a rebate based from a Kenosha County purchase that qualified for a rebate and then would you ever ever turn that into the finance person? Had had I made purchases that would have qualifying rebates yeah. on them? I can only assume yes. Yeah, okay. um, I, I mean, I don't recall what the, well, somewhere in 2019 was that? I, I guess it was 2018. 2018. Okay, so 2018. So 2018, um, I don't know if, I think prior to the pandemic, it was hit or miss whether they were running rebates right. at the time, I think. And as of late, it seems like they run it all the time. Yeah. So I am going to assume that yes, there were purchases that were they're made that qualified with rebates. Okay. And my understanding, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, my understanding is when you went to Menards, you made a purchase for the county, you had the receipt, a store receipt, and then would you have to come back to the shop and do like another? For lack of a better term, I'll call it almost like a purchase order form where you list the items that you bought, how much, the quantity, and then you turn that along with the receipt into your finance person. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Okay. And then sometimes it was, I know at Menards, through my own personal purchases too, sometimes a, a rebate would come at the bottom of the receipt mm -hmm. and they would be perforated. Sometimes they're just sitting there hanging or whatever. Um, so were there times you think that that rebate receipt might have been attached to your receipt that you would turn in at all or no? Can you remember a time like I, that? I would assume that if there was a rebate receipt, it would have been attached. Okay. And then if there were times that could there have been a time when you were filling out that paperwork and for whatever reason you, you qualified for a rebate, but the rebate receipt wasn't attached, would there could there have been a time like that too? I... I <clears throat> I, I don't know. <laughs> it goes, so I, I, I would bring this stuff back, it goes to me and then it goes to my clerk. Okay. And, and to, um, I indicate to her where all the purchases have to be allocated to for the PO. Okay. And then it gets either, some one way, shape or form, it then goes to our administrative office where our finance assistant okay. uh, takes care of the rest. Um, and I don't know what the practice is up there, um, but I believe one of our more recent purchases there, the finance assistant um, did send in a, a rebate. So the, that rebate receipt would have been attached to that. I do not recall what purchase that would be. Um, and it, it sounds to me like Finance or Kenosha Joint Services. I mean, if you go make a purchase at Menards, Finance or Joint Services would never know either way if it, it qualified. For, that purchase would have qualified for a rebate. That's fair to say. No, I think they would know that it, if it qualified, okay. um, because, like you said, the receipt would have that rebate slip attached to it, most most likely, okay. unless, like you said, it was perforated and came off or, or something along that lines. Yeah. So I would I would think so, yeah. But again, you guys, there was no directive on how to deal with rebates. None. Yeah. Um, until this ha has occurred, mm -hmm. I have been directed uh, by the director to that all rebate forms or receipts will be uh, sent to the front office. And is that is that Josh Nielsen? Yes, it is. Current director. Current director, okay, correct. And how long have you been employed with Kenosha Kelly? 
30 plus years. Okay. And then you became a supervisor when? Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> I just asked. Uh, um, does 2007 sound about right? It does, yes. Okay. Yeah, be- yesterday I was, I, 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 it sounds horrible, but I don't recall, you know, my progression through, and, and yes, uh, yesterday I had asked in 2007, I couldn't tell you the exact month. I do have it written down, though. Yeah, okay. And that's fine. We understand that this is not an easy thing, so if you don't recall specific stuff like that, I get it. So don't, don't feel bad if you, because you got a lot on your plate, I get it. Okay. And then what are some of your duties as, like, supervisor at the shop? What what are what are you in charge of? Um, I run the shop, basically. I do uh, all the daily operations. Um, I assist with the... Um, uh, purchase specs and uh, for vehicles and equipment and uh, develop budget for the department, um, oversee the technicians and car wash employee and clerk. Um, um. Sir, if employee issues come up? Yes. Got to handle that. Yes. Or you're probably the initial person that starts something if there's a discipline issue with an employee or whatever. Yep, correct. Um, and then if an employee says, hey, we're going to need some of these supplies for the shop, then you would go to Menards and make those purchases. Yeah, or wherever. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we have any more questions about the Menards process, but um, so we'll get into the, the complaint about the scrap metal. You may have covered some of this already. Um, but we're not familiar with this process at all. So we're gonna to try to start at the beginning and, and work our way forward. You've been there for a long time. Mm. So when you first started there, what year was what year did you first start? Nineteen ninety two. Okay. And in ninety two, what was your role there? Um, ninety two I was a I believe the job title was mechanics helper. Okay. And who was the director at that time? If you can remember, if not, that's, yeah, that's a long time ago. It's a long time ago. Well, there's had to be Ray Graham. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah. So start, starting way back when you first started, obviously a shop generates scrap. Mm-hmm. Um, what was done with the scrap when you first started? Thrown in the dumpster. Okay. And did you have any policy or procedure or any directives from anyone to tell you how to deal with the scrap? No. And how long was that the process where you guys were just throwing in the garbage? Oh, goodness. I, I truly don't know. I mean, we... I, for uh, years. Okay. I, I mean, that's all I can say. I, it, I mean, there... I'm trying to remember at what point we started collecting, like I said, as a, not collecting. Instead of throwing it in the dumpster, we started setting it alongside the dumpster, creating a, a pile you, with the intent of, you know, taking it and trying to get some money for it and utilizing it for our, our shop cookouts. Okay. And when, when you guys started that process of just kind of putting it in a pile, with the idea that, you know, we're, instead of just throwing this out, we use this for something for the shop. Um, were the bosses aware of what, that you guys Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how long did that kind of informal, um, just piling it up and taking it in and... Forever. Okay. I, I mean, it, it's still piled up today. Um, there is, there's nothing in place and we've been struggling to find an appropriate method um, uh, of disposal. I mean, it, it's still, uh, I discussed this with them yesterday. Uh, I said, moving forward, um, God willing, I still have a job. I said, there needs to be a directive to add specifically what needs to be done with this. And um, I, I mean, I'll, I'll let you continue, but sure. Yeah, but so. Yeah. So, so I guess we'll fast forward to, to when you're in charge, but from the time you started as a mechanics helper up until you became supervisor, was that kind of the yeah. this what happened? And just kind of you get guys just threw it in a pile. When it reached a certain level, it would get taken down to the scrapyard. 
Yeah, whenever, it, I mean, if it got to, if, if it got dangerous, where things were piled up and somebody could get hurt, or um, it, it was, it, if it became a, uh, in our way, or whatever, that, yeah, it, and it was really based on, you know, whenever we had time or something, I mean, us uh, as employees would um, bring, use our personal vehicles or trailers to, excuse me, to um, take it to the yard. Okay. And do you remember, I think we said 2007, you became the supervisor, you were in charge. Yes. So in 2007, when you, when you were in charge, did you guys continue that process that had? We did. Okay. And do you remember who the director was when you were in church, when you were promoted? Sumer Sinkis. Okay. And did you ever receive any guidance or was there ever a policy put into place when you were a supervisor uh, directing you what to do with the scrap metal? No policy. Um, there, there was a time that we had taken it in with our shop vehicle um, or, or company, you know, departmental vehicle, uh, that we took scrap in and the check had been made out to joint services. And that was handed to her. Um, and so, well, what is this? And it's like, well, this is from, uh, you know, a scrap metal run. And, uh, and, what are you what are you going to do with this and it was explained at that time that you know the money is up to that point have been utilized for cookouts so could you and they made this out to the, the agency and um, I don't believe we ever saw the proceeds from that because at that time we were or I was instructed that it wasn't worth the it, to, to stop Doing that on company time, it, it the, the manpower and the risk of injury and whatnot, it, it just she didn't want us doing it. It wasn't worth it. What scrap yard were you guys using? Um, one in Racine. Um, I believe it was Miller Compressing. Okay, is that the one that you guys continue to use? We haven't for. Um, I, I want to say at least the past two or three years um, have not, we just recently, so I guess yes, just recently, um, I'm trying to think when this would be, it's pretty current, I should remember. Um, I want, I'm trying to think, it was prior to me, um, and, and it had to be um, in September of this year, uh, er, early September, we'll say. I was finally ob to able to obtain a scrap metal container from the uh, from the scrapyard. They dropped it off at our site. Um, I had I, I called around. Somebody had made the comment that we, uh, you know, they'll they'll drop a container off with you and, and leave it there until you're ready. I'm really um, so we called up I called up I called uh, uh, at several places and ultimately um, they finally dropped off a container for us to fill up and it was for Miller I, I don't think that's the name of it now okay but the the same place um, joint services has a check that was received for that okay um, so I don't re I, I can't recall who the name of them are but okay. same place. There's only a couple in Racine, right? I don't know. Okay. If I were to say the name Alter, does that sound familiar? Yeah, yeah, it does. Alter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, not that I don't want to jump around on you too much, but okay. when you were the when you became supervisor and you guys were running the scrap, um, how often would you do it? I don't know. <laughs> like I said, it was whenever required. It, you know, if it got um, too big or in the way or, or whatever, um, that it was just out of necessity whenever we would do it. And I don't know what the free consumer was. I really and know. where were you guys throwing the scrap at this point? Where were you storing it? Um, 
Well, back in 2007, um, we were still in the safety building, so it was getting thrown right next to our dumpster. Okay. And was that inventoried at all or monitored? No. So if an employee wanted to or someone wanted to, <coughs> could they take things from that pile or put things on that pile and without anyone knowing it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said, it was considered trash and um, we had added, um, I, I know if we had, if we, any of the guys or myself did a, a break job at uh, home or, or uh, exhaust or whatever the, whatever the repair might be, or if we just had something else loose laying around and it would get tossed on that pile. So when, when things got to the point where the, it needed to be handled, the scrap had to go, um, what was the process of getting that from the yard, from the scrap pile to the scrap yard? Would that be your decision to say, okay, this is piled up long enough, we need to get it out of here? Yeah. So what, what would the process be to get that from the scrap pile to the scrap yard? Um, we're talking like... Yeah, when you were supervising. Work, yeah. Um, at, at some point, uh, at some point in there, we tried utilizing, um, just to simply get it out of there, we tried utilizing, um, scrappers, you know, we have them driving by on a pretty regular basis. Um, then that was frowned upon, um, by the director, uh, indicating that it was a liability to us. Um, so we had to stop utilizing scrappers. Which director was that? That was Sue Mersinkus yet. And then at some point um, my cousin uh, was called in um, and basically, can you get rid of this for us? And he would come yeah, basically, if we would call, uh, or I would call, um, and I would say, hey, would you have an opportunity to come get this out of here for us? And uh, it's piling up, and we need to get rid of it. And sometimes it was, yeah, I can come right now, or no, I'm uh, too busy, I can't come get it right away. But eventually, um, he had been utilized to do that, and we would receive uh, a portion of the funds from whatever he got with uh, turning whatever whatever monies he received for whatever he was dumped in. Um, the, you know, we, we would receive that and it was kept uh, again in the kitty for uh, our cookouts. And what's your cousin's name? Ryan Conway. Okay. So he would come to the shop, he would call him and say, hey, scrap is ready. And he would come pick it up. And how would how would that work? Would he load the stuff up himself? Would you guys load it up? It all depends. Um, typically, if there was, he would certainly load it up in there. He'd toss it in his truck. There were times that uh, any of us would have helped toss it in the truck to to get it out of there. And how many times a year would that happen where you would come get scrap? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. I, I really I don't know. It wasn't, <clears throat> I, I would think it wasn't even how many times a year. It was, it, I don't know. And what was the agreement between you and him? Like, you know, he's coming down and he's moving all this scrap and doing that work for you guys. What was the agreement? Like, what percentage would you guys keep? What would he keep for his trouble? We didn't really have an agreement because, uh oh. A lot of times, I mean, he had a bunch of scrap or whatever loaded in there from uh, his stuff, uh, from his shop, and the ours would just get piled in on top of it, or, or vice versa. And um, it wasn't even an agreement. Uh, he would just say, "Hey, here," and, um, and he'd, he'd hand a receipt and uh, some money and. It would get tossed in an envelope and kept for. That's how we had kept track of it, or how I, you know, kept. I didn't want any confusion 
with all of the employees in the shop. Um, it, it, the information was how, how much money is in there, can we, can we get this or can we, can we do a cookout or whatever. Whatever incoming or outgoing, receipts were always provided. Or you, you know, in there. So he would give you a receipt for what was dropped off at the scrapyard, or you would keep a receipt of how much money he gave you. He would, he would give, and I don't know that it was normal, but I do recall at least a few times getting receipts that, like from the scrapyard, what he dropped off. Okay. And did you have to turn those in to anyone, or did you just keep those? No, like I said, no. This. We were operating, or I was operating, under the, the premise of this is trash. Um, and, I, I mean, some of the stuff still got thrown in the dumpster, right? Especially if the pile got too big. It just got tossed in the dumpster. And so, no, it was like a departmental kitty, if you will, uh, like a slush fund for us to to utilize. And that small amount, of the, the amount of money that you had indicated at any one time, was there ever any oversight to that? Was there any policy in place to dictate what you shall or shall not do with <coughs> that money? No. Nothing like that. Correct. So you're basically you're operating under your own accord. What you you re supervised that fund and you didn't have yes. to report that to anybody. Correct. Okay. Um so not to jump too far back, but but how how long ago did your cousin start? I know being scrap for you. Do you know what year that started? I don't even know. No. Okay. And before your cousin came to pick up the scrap, how did you guys get it to the yard, the scrap yard? Like I say, it was a mixture of personal vehicles or departmental vehicle. Okay. And when you would drop off the scrap, did you always go? Were you always present when the, you went to the scrap yard? No, I don't believe so. Okay. So who would the, the scrapyard pay in a check, I'm assuming? Yep. Yeah. So who would the checks be made out to? Before your cousin started dropping stuff off, and you were the supervisor, and scrap was being sent down, who were those checks being made out to? Um, whoever, if it was myself going, it was probably, probably made out to me. If it was uh, a couple of the other guys going, it was probably made out to one of them. Um, yeah. So if someone else went um, and did the scrap run, the check would, would have been made out to them, and then did they in turn hand the check over to you? No, they would have given me the, the cash to put in the envelope at that point. They would, they would have cashed the check. And, um, I don't recall if back then you could receive cash for the, the scrap mill or not. But yeah, I, and I think you had to provide identification. The, okay. The, in order, you know, to to get any proceeds from them. Right. But if you received a check, you would just go cash that check, take the cash, and throw in the envelope in the office. Correct. Okay. Was there ever any discussion between you and any of the directors? that said, hey, you know, you've got this money in the kitty, you need to start accounting for this, or you need to start buying stuff for the shop. Um, did you ever have a conversation like that with anyone? I had, uh, at one point, there was a conversation with um, Director Genthi. Um More recent, he was prior to our current director, Josh Nielsen. Um, and he, from what I recall, um, this was still quite a while back. Uh, he had been in the shop. He saw the scrap piled up alongside the dumpster and said, you know what's going on? you got to get rid of that. And, um, you know, what are you doing with it now? And I told him what we were doing with it. And it indicated that, yeah, you know, I, you know I'll give my cousin a call. And, and he's like, well, what happens there? And I explained to him, you know, he, he comes, he picks it up, we, you know, we load him up, he loads it up, whatever. And then he normally gives us some of the cash from the proceeds and he, uh, we throw it in our kitty for the cookouts. He said that could be seen in a bad light. You need to stop doing that. And we did. 
we, we at, at whatever point that was, we started. And, uh, we received nothing from it. It was just get rid of it. He he said, um, uh, you know, you, you, it, it obviously could see, be seen in bad light. So we had stopped receiving anything for the uh, removal of that. Or it, it, we didn't get any gains as a shop from the from the um, that scrap at the time. So do you re recall roughly about what year that was? I know I'm asking for a lot, but... Well, I'll tell you what, I might make it easier for you. I know Mr. Gensler, <coughs> I think he started in 2011. I believe and that is correct. And he worked through till 2021, and then he had to transition until Mr. Nielsen came in. So I think we're talking between probably around 2011, if that... Yeah. Kind of refreshes your memory a little mm -hmm. bit, or that kind of fits with what? That, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, um, that he came in in 2011, and so sometime during, you know, after that is uh, certainly when that so directive came from him. So from 2011 till the last time your cousin dropped off the scrap, he wasn't giving you guys any money back, correct? I don't know if it was 2011 or not. I don't know at what point that discussion had been had with Tom. Well, let me ask you this. After you had that discussion with Tom, your cousin didn't come and take any more scrap. Is that he, no, fair? No, he did. He came and he continued to take scrap, but I told him we couldn't accept any monies anymore. Okay. It, that that was it could be misconstrued or seen in a bad light um, that we're receiving money, you know, on... I don't know, undocumented if you're, I don't even know what you'd call it. It, it wasn't on joint services, you know, it okay. wasn't going through the, the front office. Did Mr. Gentner ever tell you that the proceeds should go back to Kenosha Joint Services? No. Okay. So your cousin still came and took scrap, but then he wouldn't give it, your cousin essentially would then keep the proceeds Correct. of that scrap. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Would you estimate, I mean, could you even estimate how many more times he came between? I mean, it's a lot, I know, 2011 and 2021. <laughs> Goodness. Okay. But he still continued to do it. He did, yes. Does, when, did he ever stop doing it, or does he still continue to do it to this day? No, no. They, um, at, at some point, and I don't know if it was another discussion with Director Gentner or, or, or what evolved, but it, it was determined that he shouldn't be picking the scrap up anymore either. We had to find another means of disposal and have been struggling with it ever since. We've uh, I've tried, I've reached out to the city. Um, um, I've asked you know, other various departments what they do and uh, unfortunately most of it gets thrown away, um, you know, yeah. right, in the, right in the dumpster. And we were just trying to we figured, well, hey, we're keeping some of this out of the landfill, and we're able to get uh, a few bucks for our cookouts. And um, would yeah. you have known how long ago when your cousin's last pickup was? He would have been the last one uh, to pick up prior to this most recent. I'm going to say. Uh, <sighs> Three years ago? Okay. Maybe? All right. Yeah. Um, and then just so I want to circle back, and I apologize because I didn't quite understand it. D you said at some point back in the day that you, you mentioned scrappers coming. Mm -hmm. So essentially, could anyone come and take off that pile? If, they, if I was a scrapper, I came to you and said, hey, Pat, I'm a scrapper. Can I take some of this scrap? That would have been acceptable. I mean, you had yeah. people doing that? Did I understand that right? We'd, we'd actually stop them if, if we had a bill, and then it got to the point they were stopping. It seemed like daily. It became a nuisance um, that they would stop and, and try. Okay. They'd just walk in the shop, and, um, you know, if the doors were open, but it, they'd walk in. and they, they wouldn't walk in and just take it. Yeah. But, yes. Um, it was they, an interruption probably to your day that, oh, we got to deal with a scrapper who's asking about this, and... Yeah. You or somebody else would have to deal with that person, but am I am I correct in understanding there was a period of time where essentially anybody could come up and take the scrap if they wanted it? 
Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If they, if they were coming down the street, yep. Fair and enough. they stopped in and said, "Hey, you got any thing for us?" Okay. okay. Yeah. And then one thing about Sue um, was your you had this conversation with Sue about getting rid of the scrap. Was your cousin coming before you had this conversation with Sue or after the conversation with no, Sue? No, that would have been after. Okay. And then when did the when did the the cookouts end? Were you a supervisor when they ended or was they that didn't before? Really, they haven't really ended. Okay. Um, I mean, if, if we do cookouts now, it's just, you know, out of our own pocket or out of my pocket or... Um, well, maybe a better way to ask it, when did the cookouts end using the proceeds from the scrap? I don't know. Whenever the money had run out, whatever was in that kitty, and whenever that ran out, and I don't know when that was. Okay. You think it would have been prior to you becoming the supervisor or after? No, it would have been after. Okay. So once because that... Because we were still getting some of that, uh, some of the money, you know, we weren't getting all of the money anymore from right. scrap. We were getting some of that money from... Um, the scrap from whenever my cousin, cousin would pick it up. Okay. All right. And then when you guys take it to the scrapyard, they don't obviously parse out what specific items you have. They just go by weight, correct? Yes. It, would there be, I mean, I know the weights could probably vary, but do you even remember, like, what would be the largest load that you would ever have taken over there? Not a clue. I, I <clears throat> the largest load that by far that went out was this most recent load. Okay. That was, like I said, probably two to three years accumulation of auto repair stuff, you know, components. And then on top of it, we had uh, uh, other metal goods from like prisoner partitions. And um, so every year when uh, we would build a new set of squads, we remove all of the equipment from the squads and then, um, like prisoner partitions, we reutilize the bulk partition, but they're called transfer kits for, I guess, lack of better terms. Multiple varying components, some of them being metal, um, some of them are the kick panels, some of, uh, and, and I'm sure there was other stuff. Uh, some have cages, some But, anyways, windows. that hit accumulated in our new shop for the past five years. That's right. We, because we moved in there right at the end of 2017. So the, that hit it in, we were just simply running out of room in the shop. And um, there had been one point in time, excuse me, where the city uh, had been trying and trying and working with the police department. And at one point, uh, a flatbed truck had come throughout that five, this five-year period, and they had picked up you know, a, a portion of that type of stuff. Um, otherwise, like I said, this has been accumulating. So that was a, that was all of our, from repairs and, and maintenance in the shop and all of that stuff from C uh, and the county. And um, I had asked permissions. I said, hey, what do you want to do with this? Uh, I've got a scrap metal container coming on this date. Um, are we able to get rid of this? And um, away it went. Okay. And then your cousin stopped coming after you had that conversation with Mr. Gempner. And you think that might have been about three years ago where he, your cousin stopped coming to take this? Right? Yeah, I would say roughly. Okay. Did you ever use money from the kitty to buy supplies or tools or anything like that for the shop? Yeah, I believe so. I, I, I'm not positive. Like I said, it was what it, propane. Um, I think if there was something that we may have needed in the shop and we didn't, uh, it hadn't been budgeted for or something, if the money was there, um, it would have to be a small item, you know, relatively small. Uh, uh, I think funds were probably utilized for something like that, yeah. And if you bought something for the shop with that money, how did you account for that? Did you have to turn in a receipt? No, no, it was just... You didn't have to, like, answer to anybody. It was money in the kitty. You just bought it, and then you just used yeah. it. Yeah. This kitty, like I said, we're... 
dealing with what is considered to be garbage. Um, you know, it, it was placed in the dumpster after us starting, you know, the process that we were currently in, we started placing it alongside the dumpster and parsing it out, and it was, we, we considered it trash. Um, and so, no, I mean, at that point, um, and I had this discussion with the director or in assistant HR person yesterday, I go, at what point, because they kept telling me joint service property, joint service property, I'm like, at what point is trash you know, trash and and not and they 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 really didn't have an answer for that. And so your cousin would come and get this stuff. What does your cousin do for a living? Um, I don't know the technical n uh, name of, or term of his business. Uh, it, here I can tell you, he does concrete and. At property maintenance, I guess. Okay. Concrete, lawn mowing, uh, general construction type of things. What's the name of his business? RC Property Works. Okay. And would he, I think you kind of mentioned this earlier, but would, throughout the course of his business, would he generate his own scrap as well? Mm -hmm. So would he yes. be turning in scrap from other jobs and things unrelated to your shop? Yes. Okay. So in other words, if he came with his truck, he could have already some scrap from his side or his business, the jobs he's working, and he just throws in whatever. Yep. So it's all mixed up. Correct. Yeah. So did you ever? So obviously we know now it was probably a bad practice to not account for the scrap metal because it has value, and technically it's county property. Did you ever benefit from? recycling any of that personally? No. Did you ever keep any of that money for yourself? No, like I said, I would bring that, uh, myself and others would throw stuff on that pile. And um, personally, as an employee from the cookouts, yes. Okay. It, you know. But, but no, did, did, are you asking, did I pocket any yeah, of Yeah, did you pocket any money? Did I, you, you know, go on a vacation or use no, any of that to no. buy yourself new sunglasses or anything like no, that? No, absolutely not. Okay. And up until recently, as far as you or joint services or the county, you believe this, because there were no policies, this was just treated as garbage? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We were never given a... It, none of this was done behind closed doors, so to speak. You know, it was, it was all in the open. Um, I, I mean, there were there were law enforcement people that would say, hey, I'll take that out of there. It's like, nah, I, can't. I would too, but I can't, you know? And, um, um, you know, other city employees or, you know, that would say, no, I'm sorry, we just can't, we, can, we can't do that. And, and so, yeah, it was, you know, Considered trash. And there might have been a day that, that was possible, right? Yeah. They just come say, hey, what are you doing with those rotors or what are you doing sure. with that? Could I just take it? And you're like, well, yeah. Right. Because no one really, I mean, it was, I, I understand your point. It's like, well, we're just going to throw it out anyway at that point. Right. So, yeah. Exactly. Like I said, it was literally being thrown in the dumpsters. Right. And we physically, you know, can't say we physically removed it because we would set it, we developed a pile next to it. So, yeah. but, but if you were walking to the dumpster with a rotor and it was heavy and you didn't feel like putting it on the pile, you could just throw it in the garbage and it wouldn't matter. It, absolutely. Okay. And like I said, that, that happened with sure. whatever. If that pile got out of control or it was something that wouldn't stack there uh, and, you know, it got tossed in a dumpster. So when you talked, so when you're, and was it Genther? Genther. Genther, Genther talked to you about, say, it probably it doesn't look good that we're getting money for this and this practice should end. Did anyone ever give you any direction as to what to do with it, or they, was it up to you to just figure it out? It was still finding an appropriate, appropriate method of removal. Okay. But there was no discussion of how you shall use these funds. If money is generated, you shall do this. You, it was just kind of like figured out. And right. you had this past practice of just putting in a kitty, so you just continued that yes. until you 
you felt that you were given instructions that it was inappropriate to get any money from this. Correct. So how did you kind of justify in your mind that it would be okay for your cousin to keep the money? The, I didn't even think about you know the the relationship, if you will. He was a licensed, insured, you know, bonded contractor that was reliable. You know, we call him up and we knew that somebody would or that he was going to come get it um, when he said he would, or um, if not, we'd be notified. Um, you know, it wasn't relying on somebody else, and it was like we're not receiving any of the funds. This is all, you know, and it's trash anyway. So, were your bosses aware that your cousin was coming to pick up the stuff? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it wasn't some secret side deal where he was showing up in the under the cover of darkness and taking the scrap. I was, yeah, I was just gonna say that it, it was, it wasn't like, uh, you know, we got a pile of scrap and that's gonna be um, slated to go on Monday. Let's get in there over the weekend and and grab it type of thing. No, and no during normal, you know, normally so it didn't interfere with us or or his schedule and. It could have been whenever, but it, it was always, you know, broad daylight. Um, employees were around. I mean, we we're right there at the police station, and even right now, you know, we're just uh, a couple blocks away. Um, so, so your direct supervisor is the director, correct? Yes, correct. So the director at the time was aware that it was your cousin who was coming to pick up the scrap. Mm -hmm. Was there kind of like an average amount that you would get when you scrap stuff? It, it, just, it just varied upon whatever scrap was going for your weight. Right. Could it have been a, could it have been as much as a thousand dollars sometimes? Oh, I mean, and no, no way. It wouldn't be that. It wouldn't be. I that can't much. imagine. Absolutely okay. not. So you're maybe talking. Like I said, we just had like three years of accumulation. Not only our, our crap that we were. Or, Sorry, no, that's fine. not even the, you know the stuff that we're we're generating as as garbage or recyclables, but it was the addition of the police department and sheriff's department pile up uh, on top of it. And mm -hmm. that, if I don't know the exact amount, but I want to say that was six hundred and okay. some odd dollars that was received. So at best. Even with all that you just described, I mean, there were probably times you certainly had a lot less. It might not even be a hundred dollars. Is that fair to say at some? I don't know. So. Okay. I really don't. Because, and I wish I knew what scrap metal prices were. Well, yeah, and, right. You know, I, I don't know. Okay. And it varies so much depending on what the need is. So. Well, they, I in my conversations with, you know, trying to obtain for our recent pickup, um, explained what we had and, you know, what was going in the dumpster. If I'm, I want to say it was five or six cents a pound, I think, that was received um, for our stuff. And I tried, I wish we could get a, a, like I said yesterday, I had the conversation of there is still no directive in place and it's currently being piled up there. Do you want it back in the dumpster? Do you want it, you know, what do you, I said, if I had to do this to do all over again, if I even thought it would cause an issue, we would have continued throwing it back in the dump, or, you know, right in the dumpster, right from the get-go, and not even mm -hmm. thought twice about it. Um, it. It's just not worth this, right. you know. And do you know Mr. Matheson? I do not. Okay. Do you have any idea where he would have gotten his information to bring all this forward? That's what I'm trying to. I don't know who I upset or if he was just fishing or. But there, there were two. There were details there that um, I, I'm, some of the other allegations were that I was working on my vehicle, my personal vehicle in the shop, and sometimes during work hours. There's just no way. Yeah, I mean, none of us would ever risk the that it was just unacceptable um, that way back in the day before my time um, that <laughs> was allowable um, but it created an issue where um, the 
person's personal vehicle was obstructing actual work from being done, you know, that it had tied up a vehicle lift or something along that lines. And from day one, we have always been able to utilize, you know, equipment in the shop. Could we run a business out of the shop or utilize it? No, absolutely. I mean, it was personal use type stuff. If we got a flat tire or... Like going to change your oil? No, we couldn't do that. Couldn't do that? No, absolutely not. But if you need to use a torque wrench for 10 minutes to tighten a bolt or something, you guys could do that kind of thing? We could all, well, and come to find out now, that is unacceptable. Okay. The directive has been, so we would change or we would purchase our tires from wherever it may be. And we used to mount and balance them, you know, bring the loose wheel in itself. And that directive has been given that that needs to stop. And that's something that's always been allowable. The guys, including myself, we work at the old shop. We were right on the road, so our vehicle would be pulled up on the approach. And we'd work on our vehicles outside of work hours, of course, whether it be lunch or after work. And we'd, you know, do whatever minor repairs. And a lot of people don't realize, and at our new building, parking lot, and we have the luxury now of not being right on the road, go out in the parking lot and do whatever is required. But I believe that is even deemed unsuitable now. But what they, why in the world would you want to do that is what I was asked. It's like, do you have any clue how much investment these guys have in tools? I have a new technician hired right out of school. With his school discount, he came in with $22,000 worth of tools, right? I mean, right off the gate, and that's a pretty minimalist set, you know, that he's, you know, starting his career with. And that's why, you know, it's... So one last question for you, for me. So when you, at some point, you realized, hey, my cousin can't be coming to pick this stuff up anymore. We need to arrange for a dumpster to be brought in. Was that decision that a dumpster would be brought in and that your cousin would no longer be coming to get the scrap as a result of this complaint? No. Or did something happen in between there? No, that was prior to this complaint. So what changed? So at some point you decided, hey, it's not a good idea for my cousin to come pick this stuff up. We're going to have, this stuff continued to pile up. Why was there a decision? I believe it was, I can't remember the exact circumstances, and I don't know if that was another discussion with Director Gensner. And he said that could be seen in a bad light as well. He needed to discontinue that and figure out another method of removal. So the practice was your cousin was coming to get the stuff. He was throwing you guys a little bit of the cash from picking it up for the scrap. Then eventually Gensner said, hey, no more of that. So your cousin continued to come get the scrap, but he just didn't give you any money. It was kind of like he's getting the scrap for us. We're getting it out of here. We're receiving a service, basically, and whatever he received. But then at some point Gensner said, okay, we can't do that anymore either. Right. And then did you have a conversation with your cousin saying, hey, you can't come pick up the scrap anymore, or did you just not call him to come get it? I mean, I'm sure at some point it was mentioned, hey, you're not going to be doing this anymore because it could be misconstrued as a poor decision, which hindsight. Okay. And that was after you got directives from, so when you got the directive from your boss to stop doing it, that's when it stopped. Whenever I received a directive, absolutely. Whatever that directive was, and like I told the director today, you said the most recent directive is no more use of the tire machine and balancer within the shop for personal needs. And I said that directive was issued immediately. Excuse me. And I said, furthermore, I said that extended out to anything else, any other shop equipment or joint service owned equipment. I said it just, it's not allowable anymore. Okay. I don't have anything else. Yeah. Well, we thank both of you for your arguments this morning. We'll take the matter under advisement and we'll issue a written decision as quickly as possible.
we appreciate you coming in. I, not that this matters at all. Sure. <laughs> the uh, this most recent pickup, um, uh, there were a couple comments. Oh yeah, just who cares what size that dumpster is? Well, number one, our, our lot, well, it might appear large. We get a numerous amount of vehicles in there at any given time, plus my employee vehicles. And this thing was pretty sizable. I, I mean, probably the size of this room. And uh, we got, I got uh, received a, a call from the scrapyard, the individual who I had set up the or made the arrangements for. And uh, we were accused of putting in propane tanks into the mix of things. And uh, he had photographs and everything. And I said, no, absolutely not. Um, there, there is no way. He, I, I, I read your list, you know. So ultimately, surprisingly, somebody wasn't taking from the pile, but somebody was putting, putting in prohibited, um, you know, yeah. material in there. And that's just another, right. you know, uh, it, it's sitting out there open to the general public. They could take, they could, they could add, they could do whatever. And I mean, that's a prime example of something being added, I guess. Yeah. That was, that almost, we were almost fined as a result of that. And I said, listen, you know, it's under camera. Uh, I mean, I went through and I couldn't determine where anyone did it. Um, but I showed him photos. I took a photograph of it when it was um, picked up. And I said, this is how you received it. And I don't see anything in there. Um, and we certainly did not do it as a shop. But is your yeah. scrap scrap pile today? Is it outside? It is. As you said, it's next to the dumpster. Mm -hmm. Is that accessible to the public? Can anyone just drive up to that at any time, sir? It is in an enclosure, but yes, it is. Okay. It is uh, accessible to. So if a scrapper came on Sunday afternoon and took stuff off, you guys would never know. No. And you wouldn't have a reason to review the camera. No. So, okay. So anybody at any time could either add or subtract from that pile, Absolutely. and you guys wouldn't know any different. Correct. Yeah, it's not a fan. I mean, we're wide open to the to the public. That's one. So leaving a dumpster there and it's open like that, that's going to happen. Yeah. Right. So how do you mitigate that? And I know even our trash at times we, what the world is that? You yeah. Know? So. Yeah. Do you have any questions of us? Um. No, I, th th this is all new to me. I, okay. I, I'm, I'm very nervous. I, uh, yeah, just I would never know him. I mean, I've been there for 30 years. I've devoted my, you know, career to to this place, and yeah, I take pride in what we do, what I do. Um, I, I like to, you know, the, this initial it was an attack on my integrity. You know the. The, the claims and I'm like what in the hell is this you know this has never happened before and this just this is me and um, no it's very it's very upsetting it's been an absolutely awful couple of months um, I don't know how <laughs> people lead their lives you know and, you know doing you know stuff that they shouldn't Pretty, pretty disheartening though to and I told uh, I was so caught off guard I, I don't know if I turned white as a ghost or whatever when, when right. you would call me yesterday um, and I asked the director about it and all they didn't tell you I said if only they were asked to in investigate you know possible criminal I'm like for what yeah and so no, I, I mean this is just not a uh, position I'm used to being in right and we got asked by Joint Services to take a look at it because we're an outside agency. Obviously, we've never met, so we don't we don't really have any skin in the game. As you know, well, this seems like something Pat would do or something. No, it's not that. It's just and, and I get it. Yeah, I mean, um, most of the police and sheriff's department, you know, I've got yeah, you know, thirty year right. relationships with some yeah. of these people, yeah. and uh, so I understand that aspect of it absolutely. But. Uh, it doesn't make it any easier. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all we have. If you want to have any other questions for us, you can end it here and you can go about your day. Um, okay. um, will you follow up with me and let me know what, what
what's going on, or how does this work? I, I have no clue. Basically, our job is just to gather information. We just talk to you, try to figure out what's going on, and then we will give the all the information to a, the district attorney to make a decision as to oh. what's going on with us. Oh, okay. And then, you know, it's up to them what the next step in the process is. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't. I can't imagine we need to talk to you again. If we do need to talk to you, we'll give you a buzz. Okay. Um, and you've got my number. You can call me. I believe I do. Yeah, I, yeah. I can get you. Okay. I'll. What's your cell phone number? I'll text you a copy of my business card. Okay, thank you. And then you'll have it. So you can call me if you have any questions. Okay. So basically what we're doing is, like we said, we're gathering information. Talking to you is a step in doing that because, like I said, we don't understand how all this works. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to be sure um, that we've got a handle on things and talking to you is an important piece of that because you do it every day. We don't. Right. Um, so we type all this up. And then um, I've, been, I've already been in contact with our um, district attorney about it. There was some logistical issues. You know, is this going to be a Kenosha County case, or is is Kenosha the, their district attorney? Are they going to say, well, now let's we'll kick that to Walworth County too? So our district attorney here in Walworth County is going to um, just review what we have. Um, ultimately, it's it's up to the district attorney if he feels that um, there could be some there's maybe a theft charge here. Ultimately, he has that ultimate charging authority. Um, so he, he will just review what we have. Um, certainly, you know, we've worked long enough with our district attorney. He appreciates our input and what our perspective is and what we're finding out. Um, and he, he takes that into consideration as well. So um, I kind of guess the, the short end of it is, is like, we don't know what the district attorney will do. I mean, we'll certainly have an input in what we have. Um, we're in communication with them about it, so um, it'll, it'll ultimately be up to him um, what he decides to do with it. And that process, unfortunately, I, I, you know, I don't want to show the court for you. That process may take a while for him to review it. Okay. Um, I know that that doesn't help you. Um, I just want you to be prepared for it because I don't want to sugarcoat it and say you're going to know next week or in two weeks or whatever like that. Um, okay. But again, certainly if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. Um, like if you haven't heard anything, if you'd like an update, you can always reach out and call okay. us and then we can do some check in for you. So it's not anything where we're going to try to leave you in the lurch because we understand. I totally get, trust me, we do your perspective and. We understand when you say this is kind of an attack on your integrity because it means something to you. I think you care about what Absolutely. you do. Um, so that's kind of how we have to leave it um, for now. Um, we may have to reach out and talk to your cousin. Um, I don't know if you've spoken to him since this, since you've learned about any of this or what's going on. I would just ask if you not speak with him anymore um, until we get a chance to talk to oh. him. Okay. Or talk to him about what we talked about today. Okay. Because um, I, I would think at some point we're going to want to reach out just to touch base with him. Sure. And get his perspective so we can get a, a complete and accurate picture. And that's done in fairness to you. It's done in fairness to him. Um, I understand. I, I know it needs to be thorough and right. proper. I get that. And we've also been in contact with Josh and Andrea as well. Um, Andrea. And Stephanie. Oh, Stephanie, Stephanie, I'm sorry, Stephanie. I keep calling her Andrew. Stephanie. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, so, do you do you have a good contact phone number for your cousin? The cell phone number. If we call him, is he going to know as well? I mean, have you guys talked? I, I, he is aware that I have been placed under investigation for okay. these various things. I mean, it helped. It, it was published. And, uh, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, he right. knows I was put on administrative leave. He, yes. So he has, you know, but I mean, 
I mean, there'll be times I'll talk to him, you know, quite frequently, and then sure. we can go for periods not, you know, talking at all. Right. Um, but yeah, I have talked to him recently. But okay. I mean, there is really uh, so this was difficult as as well going into this meeting at work yesterday. Um, this all started two months ago for me, or just over two months, and the directive from work from the director was to, um, this was confidential, I wasn't allowed to discuss with anybody, and um, and I didn't, yeah, my wife of course, but sure. the, uh, the then this uh, publication comes out from, uh, what's Kevin, the yes, Matheson? publication comes out from him and uh, right before that he somehow got a hold of my wife's phone number and you know was texting her late in the evening um, apparently thinking it was me um, and I said just you know tell him you're not me and you know he asked who it is if you want but leave it at that and uh, fortunately she said uh, this isn't Pat you've reached this is his wife is there something you need? And that's when he texts a business card to her and then listed all the allegations. And so I was being approached at that time from people that, from that point forward. And um, I mean, uh, at that point, my cousin, I, I think somebody had made him aware of it. And it's like, what the hell, you know, type of thing. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. And um, I don't know where I was going with this, but. My meeting yesterday, I, I said, you know, I, uh, I got called in the day prior. Uh, part of this this process was the predis of the predisciplinary meeting. I got called in to accept a piece of paper that notified me of that. And the last paragraph on that piece of paper says, uh, you know, I have the right uh, to bring representation or witnesses, um, anything, you know, to help plead my case. I'm like. Really, 24 hour notice? You, you advise me that I'm not supposed to breathe a word of this, it's confidential, you know, and and <laughs> how do you expect me to put something together in 24 hours? I mean, it's kind of ridiculous, I think. So, no, tough process to, yeah, yeah, to, right. uh, for me to go through. I understand. Trust me, we do. We get it. Um, having said that, well, you're. We'll walk you out. You're free to go about your day. Okay. And like I said, if you have any questions, you can always uh, reach out. Yeah. I'll text you a business card. Yeah. You have okay. to scan on the business card. Okay. So you'll have that. Okay. Okay. Awesome. okay. <coughs>